Hello everyone. So let's do more examples in section 2.5. So again here I love these examples because they're really a good like summary of everything that we've done so far in this class. So we have a function, the square root of x divided by x minus 1. And the first question is to find the domain of that function. So first we see a division here. So uh, we don't want to divide by zero. So here, taking care of the division by zero problem. So x minus one uh, cannot be zero. So this of course will give us that x cannot be equal to one. So one is not part of the domain. We have also a square root of something. That something is simply x though. So uh, for the square root problem, uh, we want the inside, so the inside here is just x, so we want x to be bigger or equal than zero. So bigger or equal than zero, removing one, so this will give us the domain from zero to one open, union one to infinity. So how many open endpoints do we have? And be careful here. The close endpoints, we don't need to study it with, with uh, a limit because we can just evaluate the function here at zero. Okay, so here, uh, for example, like um, here, let's do this in, in purple. So what's going on at zero? Well, if you compute f of zero, you get the square root of zero divided by zero minus one, and that's just zero. So everything is okay. Oh, he's not really smiling there, but whatever. <laughs> All right, so um, so the important limits here are the open endpoints. So I'll do the left side of one first, then the right side, and then to infinity. So let's move and guess together, okay, the important limits. So three important limits. The first one, I'm going to approach one from the left. The second one, I'm going to approach one. Uh, so sorry, the second one, I'm going to approach one from the right. And then the last one will be the one going to infinity. So x going to infinity. So again here, you need to construct your own tables. It's already done for you, okay? So here, left side of one, uh, 0 0.9. So I'm just subtracting by 0.1 here, then by 0.01, so 0 0.99 and 0 0.999. So for greater than one, I'll just step by 0 0.1, so get 1.1, 1 1.01, 1 1.001. Going to infinity, my classic 10, 100, and 1,000. Okay, so so um, again here, like a cook, okay, I've, I've made the computations for you here. So for the first table, if you evaluate at 0 0.9, 0 0.99, and 0 0.999, you're going to get, boom, okay, these following values, so minus 9.48, minus 99.49, and minus 9. 199. So we see that these numbers are just getting bigger and bigger, negatively speaking. So here my guess, my guess for my first limit, so this is a for my limit as x approaches 1 minus, is going to be minus infinity. So these numbers are just getting bigger and bigger, neg negatively speaking. So already this tells us that there's a vertical asymptote here. Uh, at x equal one. So what about the second table? Okay, so for the second table, so I'm going to uh, evaluate at 1.1, 1 1.11, 1 .1 and 1.01. 1 .01. So you're going to get, boom, the following values. So zero, uh, so I think there's a one missing here. So 10.48, 100.49, a thousand. So here you see that these numbers are just kind of being multiplied by 10, getting bigger and bigger. So here, my guess, my guess for my limit as x approaches 1 plus for my function is going to be infinity. So we get infinity here. So horizontal asymptote for sure. Uh, now for the next limit, going to infinity. So if uh, you are computing outputs at 10, 100, and 1,000. So if you put the poof, here are the outputs. So 0 0.35, 0 0.001, 0 0.031. So here are all, all these numbers are close to zero, getting closer to zero. So uh, my guess here with these numbers is that the limit as x goes to infinity 
is zero. So horizontal asymptote probably, so that's my guess here, horizontal asymptote. So if I have to kind of comment on what's up here, um, I have vertical, a vertical asymptote. Come on, come on, here we go. Vertical asymptote at x equal one, and I have an horizontal asymptote going to infinity at y equal zero. All right, next, let's compute the sign table. So, of course, from the computation of the domain, uh, we know that when is it undefined? Well, it's undefined uh, when x is strictly less than zero and when x is equal to one. Um, so, of course, uh, we're not going to do a column for the interval from minus infinity to zero and write u and d. You could, but normally, uh, if the domain starts somewhere, the sign table will start at that place also, but it doesn't matter. So what about zero here? When is the function equal to zero? Uh, so here we're just looking at the numerator. So when is the square root of x equal to zero? Well, this will happen only if x is equal to zero. So if we follow the domain here, uh, so the first point is uh, zero. So zero is an important point. And also one is an important point. Zero is there because the function is actually equal to zero there. So we're just going to write zero under and it's undefined at one. And now we want to know what's up, okay, in between. So for in between now, we're going to get the interval from, uh, let's do it in blue, sorry, uh, from zero to one and then from one to infinity. Again, here you could have another column at the beginning from minus infinity to zero open and write undefined under, that's, that's good too. Now, if we evaluate, so if we pick a value, of course, we already have some values. Um, like we already know that f, let's say 0 0.9. So why am I using 0 0.9 here? Because we already have the output in the table. So f of 0 0.9, we know it's negative. So we put a minus there, so it's minus. And then if we use f of, let's say 10, we can see that it's positive. So we already have all those tables of outputs. We can just use it right away to compute. Uh, so f of 10, sorry, is positive. So we can use it to fill up our table quickly. So we need to, to if we're going to draw this, we need to draw a function that is initially zero at zero, then it will be below the x-axis, then on the finite one, and then above the x-axis. Okay, so let's do that right away. So let's draw a potential graph. So using everything, and this is really important here. So you want to draw something that is consistent with everything that we've computed so far. So domain and everything. So here, um, if I start with, um, like before I draw my things, I like to start with the asymptotes. So I know from our previous computation that there is a vertical asymptote ping, here at x equal one. And there's also another vertical asymptote at uh, horizontal asymptote, sorry, at y equals zero. So here they are, both of them together. Boom. Okay, so here's my, my two asymptotes, horizontal and vertical. Uh, so I like to draw them here. I'm using the marker. Normally people would use dash line on paper just to make the distinction between a portion of the graph and the asymptotes because of course I'm doing it on the computer, I have the luxury of using uh, colors. Um, now that we have that, so we can start our work. So we know the function is initially uh, equal to, uh, it's initially equal to zero. So we have a root at zero. So I'm going to draw that using a full dot. And the reason why I'm using a full dot here, it's because, okay, I know it starts there. And because I have a vertical asymptote at x equal one, and I know my function is negative, I'm going just to draw a function that is negative and asymptotic to y equal one. So that's a potential good graph here. 
And then afterwards, I need to draw something that is still asymptotic to y equal 1, but positive, so it needs to start up here. And then it will go down to the other asymptote, y equals 0. So that's a good branch for it. So that's my graph for f of x. Again here, I like to label the limits that I have. So our first limit going to minus infinity, we can see it here on the left side of 1. Going to plus infinity, you can see it here to the right side of 1. And then going to the horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. We can see here the limit to infinity. So always think about your domain. When I look at this blue graph, okay, there's nothing... So there's nothing here before, okay, so when x is smaller than 0, the function is undefined. At x equal 1, the function is also undefined. At x equal 1 here, so that's consistent with the domain from 0 to infinity, uh, from 0 to 1, open union 1, open to infinity. And then, of course, the sign, so I see my root at 0, I see that my function is negative, between 0 and 1, and then my function is positive. So everything with this graph here in blue is consistent with the domain, this, the, the, the three important limits, and the sign table of your function. All right, for that example, that's it.